Hello everyone and welcome back to Wednesdays here on the Pagan Perspective. I'm your host Eric and this week we are talking about the Akashic Records. This week we are talking about Akashic Records. Our, co our topic comes to us from Black Bishop 112 and wrote, Can y'all do a segment on the Akashic Records? Sure, let's do that. Uh, I did a little bit of research, and when I say a little bit of research, I looked it up on Wikipedia and one external link from I Wikipedia until I kind of had the concept of what it was. And then I sort of went from there with my own ideas and and whether or not that's something that I would be interested in getting into and came up with the idea that no it's really something I'm not interested in here's why uh to put this into terms that are really really simple I don't think it exists in the way that people put forth the idea that it exists Here's why I would say that. I say that because the Akashic Records, as Kara did a fantastic job of defining the Akashic Records yesterday, is that overlaying patterns of energy store the records of all things that will happen or have ever happened in the universe in all places at all times. One, my computer tech brain does not let that happen and be accessible to anyone in any way for any reason. So logically, it doesn't make sense to my brain. So it's something that I don't want to get into just to continue to frustrate myself until, you know, the, the opportunity presents itself for me to actually access said Akashic Records. So secondly, is the idea that I stick to is kind of in direct conflict with that idea, and that is the only constant in the universe is change. Even records change throughout the course of time and eventually become uh, utterly, I don't want to say useless, but inaccessible. inaccessible excuse me. Uh, so... I mean, I think it's a really interesting idea, anything that has ever happened in the entire universe, because, you know, side note, if it's something that happens on Earth, it's something that happens universe-wide, whether we're talking about energy or people, just because we are the only people we know of in the universe does not mean we are the only people in the universe. However, the vastness of said universe is probably big enough and widespread enough that we will never in our lifetimes or I would assume in our future connect to another life form in a matter that was understandable by one or both life forms. So in a matter of speaking, no, I don't think we are alone in the universe, but in a matter of for all intents and purposes, yes, we are. Anyway, so that being said, all things that happen in the, in the universe or can happen in the universe do happen throughout the universe. Granted, there are things that have to have very specific um, criteria met for certain things to happen, like to get water, specifically what we know as water, you have to have a hydrogen atom are two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom, or is it the other way around? One hydrogen and two oxygen. I think it's H2O, so it's one hydrogen, two oxygens. At any rate, to make water, you have to have one hydrogen atom and two oxygen atoms to put together to make a molecule of water. Just because we are the only ones who have it in our solar system, possibly even in our galaxy. That does not mean that water does not exist elsewhere in the universe. Has been proven that Mars at one time had water on it, liquid water on it. So it is a thing where certain criteria must be met. And once those criteria are met in a certain place, then you can have, you know, water or life or whatever but i happen to think that the idea and this is one of the things that i that i noted for myself was that the idea of the akashic records being imprinted 
on every surface of every molecule of everything that has matter and even in the ether which does not have matter in its entirety seems like a stretch to me so i can't really can't really fathom the idea of that being the case i totally i totally believe or could believe that the events and the expelled energy of an area does leave an imprint on said and on that area but that does not necessarily mean because water exists on the universe or water exists in the universe it exists everywhere that's kind of i mean it's it's not a perfect metaphor but i just wanted to put that into in into a, a means that you guys might be able to understand what i'm saying so I think it's a really cool idea. I can't really get into it myself, but that's mostly because I have an overly logical, analytical mind that I have a hard time getting past certain words sometimes. And that phrase in and of itself made me go, ah, well, okay, yeah, I, I, this, is, this is where I have to say, if it works for you, good. And if not, it doesn't work for me. So I thought it was really interesting. I did read a little bit. I mean, I didn't read a whole lot. But the idea of the Akashic Records seems like something that is kind of not feasible for me to get into or, or to understand in any sort of uh, meaningful way. Anyway, uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to post those in the comments section below. Feel free to tell me why I'm wrong, uh, if you believe that I am wrong. But uh, that's all I've got this week. If you have anything else for me, feel free to put that in the comment section below. But thanks for watching, everybody. And of course, until next time, Odin be with you.